the last half century, the United States has gone from savior of the civilized world to the number one rogue nation on earth. As a result, despite spending a billion and a half dollars a day on military power, the American people are less secure today than at any time since the end of the Civil War. The expenditure of $14 trillion since World War II has brought our people only more insecurity, massive debt, and the loss of many of the cherished rights enshrined in our Constitution. It's time for the cycle to end. It's time to end the belligerence, bring home our troops, and rejoin the family of nations. And that's what we're going to do. Yeah. To set the stage for discussing our plans for Iraq, I'd like to give you a little historical background. First, I'd like to read a few excerpts from a speech I gave to an anti-war rally on February 15, 2003, a month before the Iraq war started. Saddam Hussein is a bad guy. He's a bad guy now. He was a bad guy in 1990 when April Glassby of the State Department gave him the green light to invade Kuwait. He was a bad guy in the 1980s when Donald Rumsfeld sat down with him for a chat while Saddam was supposedly gassing the Kurds. Yeah. He was a bad guy in 1977 when Big New Brzezinski met with him and proposed the invasion of Iran. And he was a bad guy in the 1960s when the CIA hired him to assassinate Iraqi leader Abdel Karim Qasim and then helped Saddam take over Iraq. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's always been a bad guy, but he was always our bad guy. <laughs> right up to 1990, official Department of Defense documents praised Saddam for vastly increasing the health care, education, and standard of living of his people, along with women's rights and religious freedom. His regime was called one of the most enlightened, progressive governments in the region. And it was. But there was a problem. The Berlin Wall had come down and the Soviet Union had collapsed. The first Bush White House had to find another bad guy fast to justify the defense budget. And they did, Saddam Hussein. They suckered him into attacking Kuwait, yep. and the first Gulf War was on. Yep. Well, now the second President Bush wants his Gulf War, too. But starting a preemptive war against Iraq would be immoral, would be costly in terms of American lives and in dollars. That's that one would require us to keep troops in Iraq indefinitely, would come between us and our allies, would incense the Arab world, would provide Osama bin Laden with thousands of new recruits, and would therefore vastly increase the terrorist threat. As a combat veteran, I will not stand idly by and watch our security destroyed by a president who went AWOL rather than fight in Vietnam. Wow. joined the Air Force, I swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And, domestic. and that includes a renegade president. Yeah. 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 If they go ahead with this war, I will call for the impeachment of George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and the whole oil mafia. This war would be treason. God bless America and God save us from George W. Bush. Oh. Amen. Now that was February 15, 2003. A month later, troops were massed in Kuwait, but shock and awe hadn't yet started. This is a little of what I said on March 15, 2003, on the eve of the war. I've been severely criticized for speaking out in opposition to this coming war. We're told that we're aiding and abetting the enemy. We're told that we should support the president no matter what. Well, I say hogwash. Yeah. I feel an affinity for the troops deployed in Kuwait. They're my comrades in arms. 
But the truth is they're not over there protecting our freedoms. Yeah. Our freedoms are not under attack by Saddam Hussein. Our freedoms are under attack by John Ashcroft. They're threatened by John Poindexter. They're trampled by Donald Rumsfeld. They are disdained by Dick Cheney, and they are not even understood by George <laughs> The troops surrounding Iraq are not protecting us. We are protecting them and their honor and their freedoms by speaking truth to power. Yeah. And here is the truth that we proclaim. This coming war has nothing to do with national security or freedom or democracy or human rights or protecting our allies or weapons of mass destruction or defeating terrorism or disarming Iraq. It has to do with money, it has to do with oil, and it has to do with raw imperial power, and it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Preemptive war would be immoral, illegal, unconstitutional, a war crime against the people of Iraq, and treason against the United States of America. Yes. Yeah. That was March 15, 2003, on the eve of the Iraq War. Now, now, the point of this bit of history is that we in the peace movement knew better. We weren't taken in by the doctored and manipulated intelligence and the outright untruths we were told to justify this war. One more little bit of history. I'd like to quote briefly from the memoirs of the first President Bush, written before his son got the job. Quote, trying to eliminate Saddam would have incurred incalculable human and political costs. We would have been forced to occupy Baghdad and, in effect, rule Iraq. There was no viable exit strategy we could see. Had we gone the invasion route, the United States could conceivably still be an occupying power in a bitterly hostile land." Unquote. My sisters and brothers, it's just too darn bad his son doesn't read. <laughs> Should have paid attention to daddy. He reads my back well now here we are, four years and 3,600 American lives later. This misguided war has cost more American lives than 9-11 and has dragged on longer than World War II. Yet we still have no accountability for how this war started. Oh, we know that most of you lily-livered members of Congress of both parties abdicated your constitutional responsibility to declare war or not and handed a blank check to the imperial presidency. We also know you were lied to by George W. Bush his drinking. What I can't figure out is how you believe those lies. I sure did. Are the members of Congress that much more stupid than we in the peace movement? Or maybe did you really know better, but you were being lapdogs for the fat yeah. cats? Yeah. 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 Yeah.